So the problem is that there are fewer treatment centers in America. The ones that exist are very expensive. It was the insurance industry who was determining who could be admitted, how they could be treated, how long they could be treated. Then we started to see coverages from third parties disappear. We gradually got to an understanding where we knew what we had to do. And what we're offering them is a more in-depth participation in the spirituality and steps of Alcoholics Anonymous. What we wanted to do is create a model that assumed that the people coming to us already knew they had the problem, that it was all about the solution. The idea of the retreat really took a long time to start. The impetus of it was George bringing together a group of people and saying, you know, let's, let's come up with a new model somehow and let's, let's bring people together that uh, have had years of experience in the field, in recovery, uh, that are all committed to do the same thing, come up with another approach to helping people. I chose people for the board who were in recovery, who had good recovery, who were dedicated to the field. And I said to them, let's try to evolve a system based on what we know about recovery. We met at the Basilica at St. Mary's uh, in the rectory once a month for seven years. And it was a frustrating, time-consuming process. To watch George Mann say, I will go out and raise $600,000 to get this thing off the ground. And I knew he couldn't raise the money. And he went out and he raised the money. And the property came, we found the right piece of property and it came together. And we, John Curtis agreed to leave a very important job that he had in the field and come with us to do this work. And when those three things came together, it went clunk. Total abstinence and active involvement in Alcoholics Anonymous are by far the most effective approaches to helping people recover. And if we know that as a field, then why not put all of our energy teaching people the basic principles of recovery embodied in AA. I never really knew the big book before. I'd, I've been in the program in and out since I was 14 years old. I never studied the big book. I never understood the big book. To me, that was for the old timers, and that's those are the ones that needed the big book. I, of course, had something else. What we do is a three-week rotation, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Starts at 8 in the morning, usually goes about two hours. And we start at the beginning of the book with a doctor's opinion, and we take them through chapter 7. So they have the basic information about the steps, how to do them, what's expected of them, and, and basically how things fit together and how they work. So an experience that someone has here at the retreat for a month, they're going to meet a hundred different volunteers that come in and out of the retreat carrying a message of hope and recovery. And I'll tell you, if you're at all interested in recovery, uh, it is attractive. The volunteers who come to the retreat are one of the greatest gifts. They carry the message in a way that is, is, is it's workable, it's understandable. It's just one alcoholic helping another. And that, I think, is really the special component that the retreat has that other places don't. That it's this idea that we have the tools, each and every one of us, to help each other. I have been given so much from this program, and I have so much to give back. I'll never, I'll never give back with as much as I've gotten. And so that's why I come down here. Uh, uh, besides that, I kind of like alcoholics. Dr. Bob was asked kind of to describe Alcoholics Anonymous in, in just a couple of words. He said, AA is all about love and service. And when I think about the retreat, uh, it is at the core of everything the retreat is about, love and service. It's like most things that involve grace and most things that involve spirituality, they seem to have a life of their own. And once that starts to happen, it's, uh, you feel like you're cooperating with something rather than making it happen. In our world today, uh, with all of the, the wars and the cynicism and the negativism, when I come out here and I experience the love, the compassion, the care, 
all the things that occur on a regular basis here, it is really invigorating and it is so affirming. Uh, I get a whole, you know, I say, you know, there really is hope for us after all. When I left, I had something to stay sober with. I had uh, I had a remedy.